Good day, I'm here at Sassafras Creek Originals in St. Genevieve, Missouri. It's the oldest settlement west of the Mississippi River, founded in 1730. That's why we are wearing colonial clothes today. Some of you have never seen me in these clothes before unless you check out my Instagram, because I'm always in colonial period clothes on there. And I'm here because Candy is my dearest friend. She's a complete sweetheart and she owns this shop. It's a colonial themed shop. They have everything from redware to quilts, uh, cookie molds, anything colonial, she has it. And Candy, tell us a little bit about the history of this shop and the building that it's in. Okay, well, first of all, the building the, is a house that was built by um, an African-American family in St. Genevieve in 1850. So the house is not colonial period, but I took it back another 75 years in time to make it a colonial store. So I did all of the stenciling to make it colonial. We have the cage bar to make it colonial, uh, to match all of my wares and to go with the town. And I've been making things since uh, I was a child actually, but I started Sassafras Creek Originals in name in 1994. And I started out with game boards and I used to go to the Daniel Boone home all the time with my game boards and pedal my wares up there, up there at different reenactments. And over the years, it, it just grew and grew. And then I got a couple of booths in the <laughs> antique mall down the road and that grew. And then um, I've had my eye on this little house for about 16 years. And four years ago, I noticed a for sale by owner sign in the yard. and. I swept it up and turned it into my store, so that's uh, that's how Sassafras Creek started. It's gorgeous in here. I Thank you. I swear, if I was to hit the jackpot, the lotto, I would come here and have a shopping spot. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in here is exactly my style. Well, let's go Everything. get you a ticket. And they have tea. <laughs> yeah, and they have tea here too, and I'm I'm a huge tea drinker. Yes. So we're here today because we have 20 questions that we're going to answer and these questions were provided by our fans as well as just our reenacting friends. So we're all three, we're going to answer these 20 questions. Candy's been in some of my videos as well. Mm -hmm. I'm the tavern keeper. Yes. And uh, the shopkeeper. And the shopkeeper. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it. The very first question, what got you into history? Ron can start. And by the way, Ron is sitting on a very low stool because we, we didn't all have chairs that matched. So that's why he's awkwardly low right now compared to us. So what got you into history, Ron? So what got me into history was uh, movies like The Patriot, Pirates of the Caribbean. It, it sounds pretty simple, but you see things in there that just inspire you. For an example, um, if you think the wagons look cool, it gets you into wagons, so you start researching about that and it just snowballs into something else, um, whether it be guns, uh, clothing, food, um, or even ships. A lot of people are into ships, building model ships. Uh, maybe that's your access point into getting into history. I just thought it was always very romanticized, so it looked really cool, so I was interested in it no matter what period, mm -hmm. but particularly early American, that's our history here in America, mm -hmm. so that's what I focus on. Okay, so we'll go around the table and it's my turn. So for me, um, my dad is a antique collector and he always has been. And then my mom has a very Victorian aesthetic, so my house was always full of antiques and Victorian furniture. And my dad was in the military. I, in real life, I'm a colonel's daughter. And so growing up, I grew up primarily in Germany. I was there in elementary school and all throughout high school, Heidelberg, and Wiesbaden, if anyone's wondering. And so I grew up um, in the old part of Heidelberg with the cobblestone roads and the old 18th and 19th century buildings. And then when I would come home, my house was full of antiques. So that's just what I grew up to find beautiful. I don't find modern things to be beautiful in most cases. And that's just what I'm attracted to. I mean, I'm not like Ron when, when it comes to the movies. I didn't get into it because the movies. I got into it because I just grew up with that stuff and so that's what I find to be beautiful. I like period clothes, I like period architecture, that's just what I find to be pleasing. So I push away modern things and uh, I put historical things into my life and ever since I was a kid it's been a dream of mine to have an old style farm. 
so that's why I got into it. <laughs> I've always been more into the culture of history as opposed to battles and dates and things like that. So what about you, Candy? What got you into it? Um, I tell people I was born loving history. Um, probably that's a little exaggerated, but I can actually pinpoint it to five years old. Um, my grandmother was a school teacher and she always belonged to the Reader's Digest book club and so she would always get us these really cool books and um, there was a, a Reader's Digest book that was called Visiting Our Past and they're those nice big coffee table books with the beautiful pictures right. and it had all of the living history museums of uh, early America in it and um, I saw, I can remember seeing a tricorn hat and I fell in love with a tricorn hat and everything associated with that hat. So that would be everything early American. And I still love tricorn hats. I just think they're the coolest hat in the world. And I wish people still wore them today. Look a little awkward with a t-shirt, but- They're handsome. Yeah, they are. They're very, they're very, they look good on everybody. And um, even women wore tricorn hats. It would be a little more uh, gussied up, fancied up, but um, I just think they're neat. And so I got to be, uh, interested in everything associated with that time period where that tricorn hat was and I love 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 all history but my first love is colonial American history because it's the beginning of our country it's our foundation and I think that right now especially people are losing sight of our foundation and um, our early American history kids don't know it um, they see Ron's hat they think he's a pirate um, <laughs> that's the most common because of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies but it's just because it's that time period but I just love everything about colonial America I love visiting Williamsburg and those old um, history museums uh, George Washington is my earthly hero um, I think he was an exceptional man and um, that's why I love history and I love it so much it actually affects everything that I do my store my crafts everything that I make I want it to be associated with that time period because I'm afraid we're losing it. So that's why I love early American history. And I can verify that her house has a lot of portraits of George Washington. Three of them in the living room. Her husband says yeah. that's her secret boyfriend. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's a little jealous. No yeah. threat. He's, he's, he's gone. Been dead. <laughs> he's been dead for 200 years, so, okay. so harmless the, affair. The next question is, what are your favorite TV history shows? So, <clears throat> TV history show. Mm -hmm. My most favorite is probably the one that came out um, a handful of years ago, maybe 2013, I think, was uh, on AMC Productions, Washington's uh, Spies. It's called Turn, mm -hmm. Turn Washington Spies. Uh, it features on the first spy ring in the American Revolution, and uh, they did that very well. Um, my second go-to would probably be Poldark. Um, it, it's also done very well. It's I think it's through the, the British TV, one of them channels. It's, I think it's... Masterpiece Theater. Masterpiece, mm -hmm. yeah. It's through Masterpiece. They do really good work on mm -hmm. uh, their other series like Victoria. Right. That's period good, pieces are yeah, special. Yeah, their period pieces are very good. And the, uh, the third and final one is probably the more newer one called Outlander. Um, it, <laughs> most of it's not true, but the <laughs> aesthetics of it are, are pleasing and when there's nothing else to watch, when you turn on History Channel and you're watching stuff about storage units and alligators, cars. it has nothing to do with history. So if Ancient I can get a little aliens. bit of fantasy <laughs> yeah. with some real history, um, that's good enough for me. What about you? Two words. The Tudors. I love that show. <laughs> I actually love everything to do with the that whole century and the Elizabethan period. That's British history, but it completely fascinates me. And a couple days ago, I got Ron to watch a, an Anne Boleyn movie with me because I love everything about that character. She's my favorite person to learn about. So I pretty much just watched the Tudors for her. And then after she was executed, I was like, eh, I guess I'll finish the show. But she was definitely my favorite. So the Tudors, that's where it's at. Otherwise, I'm more <laughs> of a movie person than a show person. And you've been getting me into the Salem oh, show. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot. The, uh, the Fox series... Uh, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, uh, not the movie, good. the show. It, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> the monsters on there are definitely realistic. Mm -hmm. They they tie in once again like Outlander, the the fantasy of time travel sort of with modern. So that can't watch that when it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a horror one. I don't recommend <laughs> watching it after dark if it's storming outside uh, and, and by yeah, itself. It's, a, it's pretty intense. <laughs> I think yeah. we're halfway through the first season, or almost out of the yeah. first season. Yeah. 
What about you, Candy? Oh gosh, there's too many. I'm a lot older than you guys. Um, <laughs> uh, probably one that maybe not very many people know about, but it's got Henry Fonda in it. It's a movie. It's called Drums Along the Mohawk. It's actually a really good uh, colonial movie. It can be a little cheesy, and um, but uh, it's it's actually really uh, it's got Claudette Colbert in it. There's a really good movie, um, and actually pretty accurate for what they're trying to depict. Um, but uh, and then I loved the uh, in the '80s they made a series about George Washington, which he's my hero, and I love that. I have of that on DVD. She likes that. I have that DVD <laughs> as well. Yes, that's they, that was the Barry Boswick. That was very well done, and um, so I liked. I mean, I loved that one, and uh, then of course the Patriot came out, and that was a really good movie with Mel Gibson and and Heath Ledger, mm -hmm. and of course I'm an out, I'm a huge Outlander fan. I read all of the books. So I know what's going to happen. I won't say anything. Yeah, don't spoil it. I will not spoil it, but I, I know what's going to happen, and I'm like really excited that they're getting ready to get into the American Revolutionary War period, which is my favorite time period. And um, so I love Outlander. I loved Pull Dark. Um, and who couldn't love that guy in a tricorn hat? I'm just saying. <laughs> also, I, 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 I forgot about one that's hats. very important: um, the Daniel Boone show. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 70s. Yes. What even I, even yeah. I watched that. Uh, yeah. That that will ignite an interest it's, in little kids. It's, it's yeah. I mean, that's even what though it was it's cheesy for. and uh -huh. Disney and, and Daniel Boone did live around here for right. a while. Right. He retired his, to Missouri. Right. So. And his family lived around here too. Right. Yeah. What do we got next? Okay. What is one thing that you'd love to have in modern times that is from the past? Ooh. George Washington. <laughs> yeah. Right in now, it's in his tricorn hat. We could, we could, use, them. We could, we could use them. Uh, come back to me on that. You guys answer first. Okay. So I got to think about that. For me, definitely the clothes. Oh, Modern yeah. clothes bore me to death. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I've always been a skirt and dress kind of girl. I'm not really into pants. Ron's trying to get me into wearing jeans more. About the two pairs now. Yeah, <laughs> but 99% of the time I'm into skirts and dresses because honestly I like being a girl and I like feminine clothes and I look at pictures of fashion plates of clothes from the past and I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't even compare it to modern clothes. I mean, it's completely night and day, so I wish that we had, I mean, it doesn't have to be as fancy as back then, but I, I wish that people at least took the time to dress better than most even people like, do now. Even like 50 years ago. Yeah, in the 50s. Oh, yeah. You, in the, in you the didn't 50s. go to town without dressing up. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah that was beautiful, too. Right. I, I actually mm -hmm. also really like um, the clothes of the 40s, yes. 1940s World fashion. World War II era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to agree. Mm -hmm. I, th I think a lot of it is um, if we could bring back something from the past, it would be that um, civility. Mm -hmm. that you have in dressing mm -hmm. and how you address other people. When you watch these period shows, you see, you know, the respect, you know, ladies curtsy to men, men, yes, see, I mean, <laughs> chivalry. it's chivalry, civil, civility, respect, um, care in how you dress, care in how you treat other people, and even care in what you make with your hands, you know, mm -hmm. everything is so uh, imported and factory made and, and nobody takes the time to make things cheaply made just by falls hand. apart. No one takes right. pride in what and they make And that goes to the clothes too. I mean when I was a child it was cheaper to make your, my mom for me to make my own clothes for me than to go buy them from the store. Now it's the other way around. Fabric is so high hmm. it's cheaper to go buy cheap clothes imported than it is to make your own clothes. It's, so it's like everything's kind of going backwards and and I miss I miss that because I'm old enough to remember that I didn't we weren't allowed to go to town until we came in from outside and took a bath and put on our church clothes just to go to town um, and, and now that. people go to town in their pajamas which yes I I've hate. Seen that. so yeah I would I would agree with you on, on that all right <laughs> so I guess mine would be skills we don't have the, the hand skills with hand tools or the know-how um, even when it comes to something as simple as uh, gardening or planting, right? Crops. Hammering a nail, surviving, yeah, hammering yeah. a nail, um, working with wood, mm -hmm. uh, the tools. I do modern woodworking. It's completely different. I mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with those traditional tools, and that's sad. Uh, up until about 50 years ago, people still knew how to use a chisel, mm -hmm. a jack plane, and a mm -hmm. file and a rasp. Mm -hmm. And today, it's like I can try to do it, but I'm not going to do a very good job. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so I have power tools to blame for that, but I am thankful for them. But it would be nice to have those tool or those skills in my back pocket. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Next one is: Is it easy to go back and forth from 1820 to modern times? It's very easy. It takes yeah. less than five minutes to get dressed up. The hardest part is for just a man. the yeah. buttons. <laughs> 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 it's, the, it's buttoning everything. That, that's about it. But as far as mental state goes, that's easy. I've, I've walked in Walmart dressed like this. I've pumped gas like this. I've changed a tire like this. Right. And well, we all have. Right. Yeah. And we all get called Amish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ron and I will go <laughs> anywhere dressed like this. We'll go to yeah. the grocery store, mm -hmm. the gas station, restaurants, mm -hmm. because we don't want to get undressed into our modern clothes and then get it back on. Especially for a woman, it's harder because of all the underpinnings, mm -hmm. like stays and whatnot. So we'll just go to the grocery store dressed like this, and yeah, we do get stared at, but everyone's nice about it. No one's like, oh, what's that? They say, oh, that's really cool, or I really like your dress. Yeah, it generates questions. We're just continuing right. to educate the public. They yeah. always like it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would agree that it is easy to go back and forth because all of us, we just like history anyway. It's not as if it's being forced on us. Mm -hmm. So we always have that mindset 24-7 anyway that we like certain things that we aren't 100% into 2021 anyway, so it's easy Amen. to go back and forth. Yeah. So the next question, and Candy's not going to understand this, but are your fingernails real? I get asked that a <laughs> lot. Like, I have people that comment, have you a pedicure or a manicure? Like, oh, they didn't have pedicures back then. I don't even know what a, the difference is between a pedicure and a manicure. Pedicure is your feet, manicure is your hands. Oh, so that this would be a manicure. No, uh -huh. I've never had that. These are just my natural nails. I don't even wear nail polish on my fingers or my toes, and I haven't put polish on them for at least seven years now. So they just grow like this. I don't know. Nails. That's the secret. Yeah, they just yeah they just grow <laughs> like this, and my mom has really healthy nails too, and. Um, they just, I keep mine short because I make so many things and they get in my way. Right. Well, the thing is with me, they grow so fast that I cut them and three days later they are as long as this. So and I don't even put up things. with it. Yeah, I don't even... She does eat good. Yeah, I do. Healthy. I eat a lot of vegetables. I eat a lot of salads. I eat a salad every day. So I guess that's why. So yes, my nails are real. And yes, back then people did have long nails. I have looked through some toiletry books from the 18th and early 19th century and they'll have whole chapters dedicated to the care of your nails and your hands. Um, so yeah, people did have long nails back then too. Unless they were, if you were a servant. Um, yeah, if you were a servant. <laughs> and also that's another thing. People are like, oh, maid wouldn't have had long nails back then. I mean, my nails are as strong as metal nails. <laughs> so I've actually been doing hearth, hearth cooking for about eight years now, and they're they don't break off. So that's just me. I mean, mm -hmm. Maybe for someone else they would break off, but mine are like wood. Mm -hmm. How did Ron and Justine meet? I'll answer this one. <laughs> you can answer it. Okay. I'll correct so, you if you say anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so Ron had this photo exhibition, an 18th century one, where he had a mock-up battle with a bunch of our reenacting friends, and he was taking pictures of it, and it's going to go in a museum that's in downtown St. Genevieve, along with mannequins that have the uniforms that were used in the pictures and whatnot. And so Ron saw my YouTube channel, and that's how he knew about me, and he realized I live in the area, so he invited me to the ex exhibition, and then he was like, well, you're also into photography, how about we take a, like a photo shoot of each other? Which is awesome, because no one ever takes pictures of me, I always take pictures of other people. And I have a Flickr account where I put my pictures, by the way, it's on the community tab of the channel, the link is in there. So I go down to St. Genevieve to meet up with him with my camera and we just photograph each other and then we really fancy each other and that's how we met. <laughs> then we had dominoes and the rest is history. Yeah, and then we <laughs> ate dominoes and the rest is history. <laughs> and that kind of goes with the other question, did you meet before or after you got involved in reenacting? Well, I've been into reenacting since I was 19, I would say. Yeah, 19. I've been in it since... 2014 maybe full-time 2017 mm -hmm. till now but mm -hmm. I I uh, dipped my toes in the water 2014 right. met some people and it, it takes a while to acquire all this stuff uh, if you're not a good seamstress mm -hmm. yourself uh, I can sew about the equivalent of a Halloween costume but this stuff has to be done pretty well to hold up to what we put it through it's not just a one night and we're at a party but 
so it's pretty pricey if, when you go to buy it. So it's not an overnight thing unless you mm. want to go broke. <laughs> yep. So we got involved with each other long after we were already into history and reenacting. That's how we got to know each other is because both of us were into the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Next what, one. What, or, about, what about candy? Uh, what? what? Well, what oh, yeah, the, sure. How what long? Was the question? Or, it, oh. was, uh, it was just about us, but sure. Yeah. How long have you been into. Oh, she oh. said history since she was a child. Right, and my dad, um, my dad would go to uh, Mountain Man rendezvous mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So I've been, I've been doing it since I was a child. Mm -hmm. And then um, my husband, when I got married, my husband had to go out of town a lot, and I had two, we had two little boys, and so um, that's when we started out at the Daniel Boone home. We would, I got us some, uh, our costumes were cheesy at first. I'll admit, I just went and got um, a pattern out of the Simplicity book and had my sister make me one. And um, and we made the boys just some little uh, colonial costumes that was out of the Simplicity pattern book that was for costumes. So they weren't really, you know, period correct, but it was good enough to get started with. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've been doing it since I was a, I was a child, and I raised my boys to do it too. That's very and everybody good. has to start somewhere. So right. if you if you have the budget route, that's fine. We we still do budgets where we where we can. eBay. Uh, yeah, eBay. <laughs> you can find a lot of used stuff. Don't right. get discouraged uh, yeah. by it. You have to start somewhere. Because there's always somebody that's kind of getting out, or they outgrew their costume. Right. They'll put it on. Etsy eBay. or eBay. Etsy or eBay. You yeah. You get it for a discount price. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think all of us were still growing up. I mean, growing our wardrobe. Like, mm -hmm. it's yeah. a never-ending story. Right. Just like modern times. There's, right. Things yeah. go in our style. We, like, read this year. Maybe next right. year we, we're not in Plus, the you have right. different seasons that you've got to have. You're not going to wear that civilian coat when it's 90 degrees outside. No. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have lighter weight fabric for the hot part of the year. Right. And heavier stuff for the cold. How long does it take you to get dressed in period clothes? I already answered that. Okay, so for me, it's, it's for a girl, it's going to take longer than for a guy because of the underpinnings. The hardest part is probably the stays, mm -hmm. but I did put the stays on really, really quickly now. I can probably do it in a minute or a minute and a half tops. i got to lace myself into it. Um, and so I would say total for 18th century clothes, probably... Eight minutes? Ten minutes. Time. Eight, yeah, I'd say up to 10 minutes for 18th century clothes. For early 19th century clothes, it's much faster. Uh, eight minutes. Yeah. Seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> About the same for me. Right. It's really, it doesn't really take as long as some of the videos on YouTube. So like It takes 30 minutes to get into your clothes for a woman. That's because they Not do true. it slowly yeah. so that you can see what right. they're doing. But in real life, you know, you just put it on really quickly. Especially right. once you know what goes where. Now when right. you're first starting out you might not be familiar with it, but mm -hmm. eventually you know you learn where these are, even though they're just buttons, I know how far they're apart, how many there are, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna miss one. Yeah, it's like getting dressed in modern clothes. You know, you're so when you're used dressing to nice. it. Yeah. yeah, you're so used to it that you don't really think twice about it because you've done it so many times. So the next question is what is your favorite and least favorite thing to cook? And I think this is addressed to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So my favorite is anything with soups. I really love making soups. I mean, soups are really easy to make, but I just, I love soups. I'll have soup in summer. And my least favorite would be baking because baking with fire is absurdly difficult. You have to get the temperature just right to bake. With a modern oven, you put it in, set it for 350 degrees, and then it's good to go for half an hour. But with fire cooking, I mean, how do you make it so it's constantly 350 degrees? It's going to go up and down by 50 to 100 degrees based off of how many logs you got in there and how fast it's burning and whatnot. So it's really hard to bake. It can take a lot longer. It can take a lot shorter than the recipe says. That's why I don't like baking. But soups are pretty easy to do. Uh, next question is who writes your scripts? We don't have scripts. <laughs> no. Yeah, we don't do scripts. We just... Very big outlines. <laughs> right, yeah. I'll, I'll say, uh, hey, Candy, today we're going to uh, film this. And she's like, okay, I'm down. And then we just do it. There's yeah. no script. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we just wing it. It's better that just way. Go for it. If, yeah. If there was a script, it'd be overly complicated, and the prep time would be horrendously long, because I'd have to sit there and write it out. And I doubt that we'd actually stick to the script anyway. And it doesn't seem natural. Right, it yeah. doesn't seem natural. That, that's why we don't, we, we try not to use things like awesome or all right dude in the videos, but as far as accents and stuff go, that's, 
for just us being us and having fun with it and yeah. glad you guys enjoy it, us being real. Mm -hmm. Real people doing real things. Right. Unscripted. Unscripted. Right. And we're in period clothes a lot. I mean, not on camera too. Like today, after this, we're going to do a werewolf thing in downtown St. Genevieve. They're having a Halloween themed werewolf event. Ron's going to be the werewolf. And so. <laughs> it's a French folk tale or yeah. a legend. The yeah. Luke group. The Luke group. Luke, yeah. The Luke group. group. Yes. I don't speak French. So we're so used to being in period clothes and doing period things anyway that we don't need a script. <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just us having fun. Mm -hmm. Do you watch any other history or reenacting YouTube channels? Ron? Yeah, I already know what do. he's going <laughs> to say. Yeah. Shout out to a good friend I've never met before. John Townsend. Yeah, he James loves Townsend's. Townsend. His, name, his name is John. His name's John. Okay. Yeah, his name is John. J O N. Okay. Not, oh. There's no H in it, I don't think. Really? I haven't personally met him, so I don't know. But from what I've seen on papers, it's. Be nice the website's James Townsend and Son. So is he the son? <laughs> yeah, but they've changed, they've changed the name officially because uh, now it's just Townsend. Oh, it's just Townsend. But anyways, I, I enjoy their content, whether it's uh, some cooking. My sh He's my chemise as... and my little thing here and my little um my. Uh, English bodice came from Townsend. So. Oh. He's not as pretty as Justine, but he, he does good cooking <laughs> videos, but their, their lifestyle, their skills videos are, are very good and educational for mm -hmm. people wanting to learn. It's almost like mini documentaries. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to learn on glassware or denti dentistry, yeah, uh, stuff like things. that, that's a good source. I watch Colonial Williamsburg. Um, they have uh, blogs and mini videos on their website, and I watch them a lot. Um, and I have watched some of Townsend's, but I'd say I watched Colonial Williamsburg's more. Okay, so this might be surprising to some of you, but I don't watch any of that stuff. I don't watch Townsend's, I don't watch the Williamsburg, I mean I know of them, but I do so much reenacting that it's like, it's like if you're a dentist, you don't want to come home to watch more dentist videos. I'm so used to doing it every day that I don't want to come home to watch it. I'd rather just do it. So it would be super awesome to meet the guy who's behind Townsend's, but I'm not a super fan like Ron is, so I don't really watch, I don't really watch that stuff. But for history... Ron is a super fan. He is a super fan. The only history-related channel I watch is anything to do with like historical crime, because I'm one of those girls that like murder mysteries and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> like... Yeah, not pretty me. much. Oh. Okay, not Candy. Well, no. Candy doesn't like anything finally. morbid. <laughs> I don't like anything morbid, and I don't like uh, forensic shows, and my husband's always I watching forensic that. shows. So if I turn up missing, love it. the first suspect would be my husband. Yeah. <laughs> Noted on camera. <laughs> and there's, right. a, there's a cellar of this house, so probably she would end up there. Yeah. But anyway, maybe. so I like, um, like a video that'll be like a serial killer in the 1860s. Watch this, you know. Oh, you were Jack, Jack the, the Ripper. Yeah, fan. Jack the Ripper, that kind of stuff. That's the only YouTube channels I'll watch history related. Because I do it all day, so I don't really want to come home to watch it, but that's just me. What's <laughs> that? Um, if you had three wishes, what would they be? Three wishes? Who's that one for? All of us. All of us? <laughs> oh, I'm going to say land, health, and money. Money is in every single question, like, what do you want for three <laughs> wishes? Everyone's like, money! I can buy <laughs> happiness with that, regardless of what they say. Yeah, or I like a new wardrobe. Watch, yeah, I've been mm. spending a lot on it. <laughs> like she if said, I would go on a shopping spree. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, money would be one of mine too. Right. Okay, for me, it would be to have a ton of land. If a I'm ton of land. a ton of land, like if I'm gonna have some magic genie come out of a bottle for me, I'm not gonna wish for 20 acres. It's gonna be 200 acres. So a ton of land, and I would. Well, I don't. I I actually don't want a lot of money because I want to. I I would rather have people respect me than to just suddenly have a ton of money. So I would rather my second wish to be very successful in whatever I do, so that I could get money from it. But then also people would respect me for what I do. Valid point. Yeah. And the third wish, I would wish to age in a healthy way. Because, I mean, if I live to be 120 years old, that's great. But if I'm unhealthy mm -hmm. from the age of 50 onwards, that would be miserable. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be healthy. Yeah, because over 50 mm -hmm. is really old. 
Right. <laughs> um, no. I would, I would it's like... It's barely middle-aged these days. I would like to have... Like I said, I would love to own the whole town of St. Genevieve. If I owned the whole town of St. Genevieve, I would turn it into my own little living history village because there's so many things I want to do history-wise and things especially to do with kids. Um, so in order to have that, I would obviously need to have money. And then my third wish would be the same as yours. Um, because when you have, when you get into your 50s, uh, you start having uh, issues in your health that you never thought you would have. And so if you don't have your health, you don't really have anything. So that's true. Perfect health. Yeah, that's true. My mom said that health is the crown that you wear on your head. It's true. Mm -hmm. So this one is for you. Oh. What is your favorite food that Justine has made? Like oh. historical food. Uh, all right, I'm not going to fake it. We did rehearse it. I thought about it. Um, so my <laughs> favorite food is actually the little queen's cakes that she made. They are so sweet and good. Though I would like to have them with dried cranberries instead of currants. I can do that. And it's just the original calls for currants. They're, they're fluffy little mm -hmm. like cake cookie mm -hmm. delicious bites. Yeah, they are pretty good. They're basically like muffins, but with dried currants in them. Yeah, they're pretty good. Now the next one, again, is for Ron. What is the deal with Ron's tricorn hat? <laughs> so it's an inside joke. It's an inside joke. Like, you would know it if you were one of our reenacting friends, because Ron wears his tricorn hat every to every reenactment he goes to, regardless of if it's a 1770, 1790, the War 1812, 1820, he wears his tricorn hat. And then we have other reenactors who are like, uh, they didn't wear tricorn hats by 1785. But Ron says, well, I mean, not everyone back then was 100% up to date with fashion. Very true. And a guy could have worn it because it was his dad's hat and he was just sentimentally attached to it. Or he likes vintage styles. I or mean, he's a people, war veteran. Or he's a war veteran. Mm -hmm. I mean, people wear vintage clothes now and I'm sure some people did back then as well. Even in the Civil War, uh, cavalry units and mm -hmm. special units uh, did have certain cocked there or tricorn hats. There was a regiment that had mm -hmm. tricorn hats on, yeah. But uh, because I it have was a tried, symbol of America, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have tried other hats from back then, and Justine will agree with me. And if you ever seen it, you would agree too. I like poor one. So yeah, he doesn't this, like the tall top hats that were in fashion in 1820. A tricorn or a flat uh, round brimmed hat. I don't have one here, but it, it's like this but with the flaps down. It's just a flat round hat. I might have one side up. Uh, that's appropriate as well for 200 years. Yeah. But uh, the main fashion of this is 18th century, but I carry it. Over and you always say that Poldark yeah, continued to wear his tricorn even when everyone else was wearing top hats. Yep. Yeah, so there was always that one guy. You know, so I'm that one guy. You're that one guy. It's not as if there was a law that said you can't wear this fashion now no, that show, it's 10 years wear. out of date. Especially on the frontier, which is what we're portraying because that things didn't yeah. change as quickly as they did on the East Coast, right. whatever new fashions were coming in all the time. Mm -hmm. So It wasn't the norm, but it wasn't outlawed. Right. What is the coolest historical site you've ever been to? How about you, Candy? Oh gosh, there's too many. George Washington's house? Yes, George Washington's house first, Mount Vernon. I'm jealous. Um, Colonial Williamsburg, Monticello. Um, and dropping. Yeah, yeah, and then I, I just did visit, uh, just about two, two weeks ago, I finally got to go to Old Sturbridge Village in uh, oh, I've always wanted Sturbridge, to go there. Massachusetts, and it did not disappoint. And what I was excited about was here in Missouri, um, in modern times, we can't, like Ron and Justine are the youngest reenactors that we have in town. Um, young people in, uh, in west of the Mississippi don't seem to be interested in uh, reenacting in history as much. But when we went to Old Sturbridge Village, and of course at Williamsburg too, because the College of William and Mary is right at the end of the road. Um, there was lots and lots of, it was the young people doing the reenacting and so I was really impressed to see that there's actually young people that's going to carry this forward because you know once us oldies are gone, um, who's going to keep doing this and keeping this in people, fresh in people's minds? So I was pleased about that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, I always wanted to go to that village. Well, I look up pictures it was of cool. it. And it was, it was in the fall, so it was beautiful apples all over the ground everywhere. And um, mm -hmm. and they really, really do a, a good job of uh, 
being as accurate as possible, being a living um, history museum uh, like Williamsburg, mm -hmm. and of course Mount Vernon. Um, Mount Vernon's not so much reenacting living history as just visiting his house. There's park people there or, mm -hmm. or uh, whatever, and so is Monticello, but I would say Williamsburg and Sturbridge. Um, and my, my next on my bucket list is uh, Old Salem, North Carolina, the uh, Moravian settlement, because I love anything to do with Moravians. And you would love the bakery. I bet I would. <laughs> yes, because they actually still use their wood-fired bakery to make their baked goods every day. I wow. want to go there next. Okay. Oh gosh. <laughs> You've been um, in, in Europe. around the world. Yeah. yeah. American places. Okay, so Europe, well, let me first say Europe, Versailles and oh. in France. Yeah. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> Although I will say when I went, it was absurdly crowded. So that was a bummer because I could only spend maybe um, 30 seconds in every room because I was literally being pushed out by a wave of people from one room to the next. But the gardens were gorgeous and it was fascinating to stand in a place where Mary Antoinette and the Sun King stood, for example. That's really, really interesting. So that was neat for Europe. Now for America, in our area, the Daniel Boone Homestead in Defiance, Missouri. Mm -hmm. I know that town has a really neat name, Defiance, Missouri. Mm -hmm. That is an amazing place. It it's a village of old houses and there's a church too and some stores that have been moved to one area in the middle of the woods and there's one house there called the Sappington House. It's from the early 19th century and I'm obsessed with that house. I go there a couple times a year just to stand there and look at that house because it's my dream house and in summer it's it's surrounded by wildflowers. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And other than that, uh, there's a Victorian house in St. Louis called the Campbell House that I really, really love too. And not many people know about that one, but it's very eccentric inside, as many Victorian houses are. <laughs> very colorful, so I like that. I like all time periods in history, not just colonial and early 19th century, so how about you, Ron? Uh, so, some of mine are closer to home. Uh, she mentioned the Daniel Boone site. That is a very uh, impressive site. Mm -hmm. um, also, right across the river in uh, Prairie de Roche, Illinois, uh, Fort uh, Deschard mm -hmm. is a very awesome place. It is. Uh, I would look it up if I were you guys. Mm -hmm. um, is it the I, oldest building in uh, uh, the, Illinois? No, the, uh, the powder magazine that is standing there was mm -hmm. the oldest at the time. Okay. It goes uh, back to the French and Indian right, War. Right, so, it goes yeah. back to the pre-1750s. I think 1722 is whenever the yeah. original fort old. was yeah. built. Mm -hmm. But uh, what she was talking about is the original, or the powder magazine over there is still the original building. That was So they've dated that to be the oldest stone building in Illinois that was still standing back in 1970. And I'm pretty sure it still holds today. It's still the oldest one. Mm -hmm. But anyways, the fort has been reconstructed. Uh, in, in certain spots to look very impressive and we just got done doing the uh, reenactment rendezvous there a couple weeks ago. Um, I haven't been to that many places. A lot of the places I've been to are kind of touristy, um, but St. Augustine is a good place to go. There's a lot of history. There's Spanish, British, uh, American, and French, and probably Portuguese even. Because mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, Florida, that's 1500s, you know, people were already there, pirates and uh, different settlements. So St. Augustine, they have a very cool fort there right on the water. And I believe that's one of the oldest forts in America that it still is. stands today. Yeah. So that is a very cool uh, city site to check out. Um, on my bucket list is, of course, Mount Vernon and uh, a couple of other places up there for the revolution stuff. But also a newer one um, during the Civil War time uh, is Fort Jefferson down in the Keys. Uh, if you've never heard of it, look it up. It is really cool. It's where uh, they jailed some of the conspirators against uh, Lincoln down there. Uh, but Fort Jefferson is also the most massive brick structure, I think, in America. It's bigger than the ball fields. It's, it's crazy. It's surrounded by water, so you have to take like a two-hour ferry from the mainland in uh, the Keys out to this island. But uh, Dr. Mudd was there. It, yeah, he was. And that is on my bucket list to see that one day because it would be really cool. Do you play any instruments? Yes, I do. I am a drummer originally, and then uh, I crossed over into guitar uh, after high school. So I'm a drummer and a guitarist, and I can fake my way through some journey songs on the piano, but I can't <laughs> play the whole things. I can just play the, the, 
the intros and the main parts on piano. I grew up playing the violin, but I haven't touched the violin in probably about 10 years now, so I probably forgot most that. of it. Yeah, I need to learn it again. <laughs> you, Candy? Uh, well, in the fifth and sixth grade, I played a alto saxophone, and I haven't played an instrument since. Oh, and the recorder. All of us yeah, play the recorder. Well, yeah, that's yeah, the, the little <laughs> flutophones, yeah. Right. <laughs> but no, my mother is uh, very musically talented, and um, I, I just... I don't know. I just never. Are you um, a singer? I can sing. Okay, I can sing. But um, I, I probably have the ability to play instruments. It's just never. I've always gone more to the artwork thing of painting and. Right. You can't be perfect at everything. No. I no. Try. <laughs> if you could just go kidding. back um, in time, what three things would you bring from modern times? You go first. Oh, that's I easy. gotta think about it. Oh, I, uh, I gotta curse that one. Painkiller, <laughs> antibiotics, <laughs> and um, and a camera. Oh yeah, yeah, a camera would be cool. I already know my answer too: toothpaste, deodorant, and sunscreen. <laughs> I wear sunscreen every single day because I burn really easy. Hmm. Modern shoes. Oh, you could get away with moccasins. Okay, never mind, never mind. <laughs> I'm gonna go toothpaste, because toothaches hurt, so <laughs> teeth hygiene's good. Um, I should have rehearsed this one. Toothpaste, deodorant, because I don't like sneaky things, and then penicillin, so yeah. if you get sick. Antibiotics. Antibiotics, yeah. Some okay. moldy bread with you. Yeah, basic, Claire. Basic, <laughs> but... Claire's making moldy bread in Outlander Season 6. <laughs> Don't give it away any spoilers. Well, that was yeah, already that was already played. Oh, okay. Never mind. How tall are you? I'm five six. I'm five three. Six two. <laughs> After the chiropractor, he's six three. Then that would be George Washington's height. That's right. <laughs> what is something that people would never expect you to be interested in? Wow. <laughs> Just from looking at you, what's something that they would never expect you to be into? Candy is in a Kiss cover band. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Um, I don't know. I, uh, that's a that's a trick question because when I start talking to people, um, a lot of times they don't realize, and I don't mean this to sound arrogant, but how knowledgeable I am about history. Hmm. Um, because I do like all history and I read all the time and we'll just be in conversation. Um, people like to have me on their trivia teams um, because I like, I'm interested in everything. I, I want to know everything about everything and I have a good memory so I retain a lot of it. So I don't know. Um, people are surprised. I guess because I'm a blonde, I don't know, maybe they think that all blondes are stupid, but... They underestimate you. They do. We know who to call when we have to phone a friend now for trivia on, on Jeopardy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Although I can't do well or in who sports. Who wants to be a millionaire? That's the show. No, no sports questions because I could care less about sports, especially now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But, um, so I'm not good at, at sports, but but literature, history, music, art, all of that stuff, I just, I love it. Science, um, people wouldn't think I would be interested in science, but I am. So, yeah, I, I, I come off, I guess, as the, as the dumb blonde, but I think they're surprised I have a brain. <laughs> if only I had a brain. That's right. How about you? Um, I think people are surprised to find out I like heavy metal music and I like horror movies. And uh, I like murder documentaries, and I'm really morbid. I mean, I grew up in Germany, so I like Grim a lot of German Germany tales. Oh, yeah, I, I have that book. I yeah. like a lot of German industrial music and goth music and that kind of stuff. But I like all sorts of music. I mean, I like that, but I also like Madonna. So, I mean, <laughs> I kind of jump all over. What about the, the classics? You like classical music? Classical music? No. Oh, I love classical I music. Hate I it. enjoy it sometimes, but My dad I have to be in for it. it. My dad will only listen to classical music since I was a kid, and he plays it in the background of our house like I live in a movie or something. So there's always soundtrack music going on in our house. And I think because of that, I just got sick of it. But I will say I do like some Baptiste Lully from, I think, the 17th, the late 17th or early 18th century. That's Baroque music. That's the one composer that I do like. What about you, Ron? Oh boy. <laughs> Ron and I, we both like metal music. I'm literally into everything. Uh, so I'll just throw out some of the 
it's completely different things from history. Um, I'm a big hair metal fan. Anything in the 1980s, Bon Jovi, Molly Crew, Poison, Def Leppard, <laughs> that's me. Um, I also like motocross. I'm very big into motocross and uh, supercross stuff. Um, I do professional photography. That's where I got started, and that's just kind of the lifestyle I live. But I, you know, different ends of the spectrum. But I, I love the awesome parts at every different end of it. So uh, those are some of the highlighted parts that are different from history that I like. I also like to cook. I love cooking. Yeah, he's a really good cook. I, he makes very good meatloaf. Yeah. So <laughs> What's <dinner>? cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love, I love to cook. That's something I'm really into. Uh, I'm not very good at the historic stuff. I think it's fascinating. And as far as historic recipes go, mm -hmm. personally, I, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of most of them. But I love the aesthetics of it. I love cooking in a cook kettle or Dutch oven, as we call it today. Um, I, I think it's awesome. But in general, I love to cook. Yep. The last question is, where is your favorite place to eat? Your mm -hmm. favorite restaurant? Wait, fast food or sit down? Uh, or both? Both. Okay. <laughs> sure, both. Ooh. Um, fast food, I'm really tired of fast food. It's not fast anymore and it's expensive. Um, <laughs> Medium food. <laughs> uh, I guess regular sit down every day. I like Cracker Barrel. And what? Yeah. She stole like our answer. All of us are going to say the exact We all like same Cracker thing. Barrel. We are obsessed with We're Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel fan. Yeah. And then, um, because it tastes homemade. And then and the price. And then as far as my like favorite pricey Dinner, this is a shout out that they don't know I'm gonna do, but I love Chalmette Winery. Um, their food is amazingly delicious. It's uh, chef prepared, it's ex very expensive, so we maybe go one, like once a year for a special occasion, an anniversary or a birthday, but. Is that in St. Genevieve? It's in St. Genevieve County. The winery. Okay. The winery, and um, it's in a very beautiful area. It's out in the middle of the county, and when it's nice weather, you sit out on the veranda, and, and the view that you have on the veranda is, is just unpolluted scenery. There's nothing but valleys and hills and beautiful trees. And it's very French historic architecture. Yes, the, the French villas. historic architecture. The um, villas and the... Uh, yeah, the little villas that you can rent out there and stay in. They're very pricey too, so I'll not be doing that. But um, as, far as, as far as the best food I've ever had that is expensive, it would have to be Chalmette. And I mean, I've eaten on the East Coast and everywhere, mm. and that, that's the best. I've never been there. Oh, well. Because I can't afford it. <laughs> romantic we'll dinner for two, yeah. Okay. Valentine's Day. There you go. You were already yes. talking about making plans for Valentine's I Day. I love Valentine's Day. Hey, Ron, you know what we're going to do on Valentine's Halloween Day? Halloween and Valentine's like, Day are my thing. Chalmette. You're going to Chalmette mm -hmm. for Valentine's Day. Okay. That's settled. Okay, I'm what fine What's your that? answers? Okay, so <laughs> Ron and I are both obsessed with Cracker Barrel. There's this couple that they've gone to every Cracker Barrel in the United States and we were like we're not going to become that couple and we're very quickly becoming that couple yeah. and we go there in period clothes sometimes because we just we're, we're, we're tired often, yeah we are tired and we're often in period clothes and you're because hungry. yeah we're, we're, we're doing tired reenacting and, and so we're like let's just go to Cracker I don't know Barrel. how many times I've eaten in, in, in period clothes and Cracker Barrel and I always hear people whispering I think they're Amish yeah Yep. Yeah, and it happens at Walmart too. Fast food, Taco Bell. <laughs> I'm obsessed with their spicy potatoes there. <laughs> they got this soft, spicy potato taco. I always, every time I go there, I get three of them, and I put guacamole on all of them. Ooh. And that's all that I get from Taco Bell, but that's enough. I never get tired of it, but eating it for like five years now. And fancy restaurant? I don't know. Fancy? Um... Somewhere in Germany? They probably have oh. really good food in Germany. Yeah, but I don't know the names of the places I went to. To be continued. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just don't really go to a lot of fancy restaurants because I can't afford it. I like buffets a lot. That's obviously not fancy. But there's like this buffet in Chester, Illinois that I really, really like. Reed's Harvest House. Reed's Harvest, Harvest House. House. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite restaurant right now, besides mm -hmm. Cracker Barrel. We like comfort food and comfort settings. Yeah. Well, that's why people go to Cracker Barrel because no matter House. where you are, <laughs> well, no, no matter where you are, you know you're going to get a, a good, consistently good meal. Right. You know what it's right. going to taste like before you go in there and it's going to be good. I like um, Asian food too. 
because I spent two years in South Korea, in Seoul, and I was also born on an Air Force base in Tokyo, Japan, so I do like Asian food. I like seafood. And I'll, both of you guys are going to say, ew, but ew. I love calamari. Ooh. I love squid. <laughs> squid Ryan and I don't like it. anything that comes out With of the water. spicy chili I, sauce. Mm, I don't do good. any water food at no. all. No. <laughs> I, 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 the closest I will get is clam chowder. I, I do like clam chowder. I will eat clam chowder the, the white, and that's not it. Not the red. Right. Yeah, the red isn't very good. Yeah. No, that's it. That's as close to I, seafood as I will get. I think the white is New England and the red is New York, New Jersey. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I'll eat anything except for eyes, brain, and reproductive organs. <laughs> Those are the three things I won't eat, but I'll eat anything else. I uh, eat feet. Oh yeah, and I won't eat that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I won't eat feet. <laughs> any any feet, I won't eat that. My favorite food is uh, any Mexican restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> and then second would be any Italian restaurant. We went to restaurant. one yesterday. <laughs> I uh, I mean that's a typical American. I love the Italian and the Mexican mm -hmm. food, but uh, Cracker Bell is, is a nice place. The most fanciest place I've ever ate at is probably uh, in the hill on the hill in St. Louis at Maggiano's. Yeah. It was about hundred dollars for uh, uh for for me. After the tip and everything. One and person? It, it's very, that's the... One person? The uppity uppity. It's expensive. I could buy a dress for that. Well, yeah. when you get the, the house salad and the appetizer and the main course and dessert, it was a birthday. Oh. But anyways. A salad? A salad is literally like lettuce. Maybe we'll go someday and you'll see, you, you can complain about the bill. And then you'll know what I'm talking about. It's expensive. Oh no, I believe anyways, you. I believe you. I wish there was German restaurants around because I'm mostly German and I love German food and I love a good Wiener Schnitzel and oh. uh, um, you know, it's it's like it's hard. It's really hard. And you would think in the Missouri area where there's so many Germans that there would be a German restaurant. There are no German restaurants. Yeah, the nearest ones are in Illinois. I think there's a big one in Saint uh, up in um, in Ladue called Schneidhorst. So if you're looking at opening up a German restaurant, come to St. Gen. We need you. Yeah, because St. Genevieve is no longer French. <laughs> they got taken you. over by the Germans. What's the next okay. question? That was it. That's it? That's, That's it. it. But, Candy, I want you to talk about the rental that you have next door to the shop, oh. too. Because she has a, a corn story. crib yes. that she rents out to people through Airbnb. Mm -hmm. I think it's from the 18th. 1840, 1840 approximately. So uh, we moved a 1840 log cabin uh, from Perry County, Missouri, where I live. I live in the next county south of here. And we moved um, this little log cabin um, next door to my shop. So you have the shop and then the 1840 log cabin sitting right next to each other. Um, it's decorated on the inside like 1840. Uh, everything is disguised. It has modern amenities, but I've disguised them so you feel like you're in 1840. They're hidden. They're hidden, yes. And um, so uh, it's on Airbnb. So the link to the direct link to the cabin on Airbnb is www.sassafrascreekcabin. Wait a minute. I'll I got a cheat. Hang on. We can. Uh, yeah, I'll put the link. Put, put this. In okay, the it's airbnb.com forward slash h forward slash Sassafras Creek Cabin. And um, my shop and my cabin was just recently um, uh, broadcast on Discovery Plus under the Magnolia Channel. Um, Clint Harp, who was Joanna Gaines's carpenter, has a brand new show called Restoration Road with Clint Harp. And um, my shop and cabin is episode number three. So if you want to see it on TV, you can get it on, uh, watch it on Discovery Plus and go to the Magnolia channel and then go to Restoration Road with Clint Hart. Yep. yep. And the Airbnb is right next to the shop. Right. And it's a convenient walk to downtown yes. St. Genevieve. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need a car. You can just walk to downtown. They have shops and old. It's exactly a 10 minute houses. walk from the shop and the, mm -hmm. and the cabin to the heart of downtown. Yep. Right. Yep. So I'll put a link to that in the description and I'll probably put it in a, the top comment, the pinned comment too. So definitely check it out and support Candy because she is a sweetheart. Oh, thank you. She deserves she's, it. And she's oh. she supplies us with props and stuff right. when we need it. Yeah. And, uh, so if you like some of, if you like some it. of the things that you've seen in our videos, you should check check out her store because that's the aesthetic that she has. Yeah. That's so this was this was has. the scene of Ron being jumped by the uh, by the bad guys. Yeah. Who also happen to be my husband and youngest son. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> the thugs. Yeah. <laughs> 
They make really good thugs too. Like I said, my husband always watches those forensic shows. So, you know, he might have that killer instinct inside. I seen it in his eyes when I was laying on That's the ground right. and he rolled me over. Yep, and my youngest son too. I mean, he's really a hairy beast. <laughs> all right, okay, that yep, that's all the questions we got today. Thank you for watching. We might do this again sometime in the future with a new set of questions because I had a pretty good time doing this. Yeah, this was fun. Yep. Oh. All right. All right. Have a good day. Bye.